All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. A um, little housekeeping before we, we kick things off today. Um, this, this session will be recorded uh, and, and we will send a, a link to the recording after the call today. Um, also, if you have questions throughout the, the webinar, we will be answering those at the end with our Q&A panel. You can put your questions in the Q&A section of the Zoom link here. Um, and let's kick, kick things off. Uh, my name is Casey Post. I lead client services for 314E. And today, we're going to be talking about what's new with Jeeves. Um, I, there's there's many of uh, many of the attendees on today's call are existing customers, so we're going to kind of show you what's some new functionality that you can that you can use within Jeeves. But we do have a number of attendees that are are new and have not um, are, are not currently using the products. So um, I want to share a little bit about three one four e for those that don't know us. Um, I'll introduce our speakers, and then we'll go ahead and and jump into what's new. Um, so 314E is exclusively a healthcare IT company. We've been around for 20 years, um, headquartered in the Silicon Valley, and we we really got our start doing EHR implementations uh, with data migration services and then uh, implementation services. So we have a, a portfolio of services that we've been providing for our customers for, for 20 years now that are focused around implementation services, training, interoperability, analytics, revenue cycle management, and, and some of the more modern tech around cloud migrations and AI and automation. Um, five years ago, we made a pretty pretty um, uh, decisive decision to move in the product space and, and develop software in the areas that we had a lot of competency of our services work. And so we, we have a portfolio of products, um, our AI-powered just-in-time training solution, Jeeves, which we're gonna talk about today, uh, a Fire Native data archival solution, a intelligent document processing solution, a cloud native integration engine, and, and several others. With me today uh, is our presenter, Ryan Surratt. Ryan is 314E's Director of Training and Digital Development. He has been a digital lead, learning leader for over 20 years, and he's passionate about leveraging technology to connect people with the information they need to excel at their work. And he has been a guiding force in the development of 314E's training delivery software, Jeeves. On our Q&A panel, he will be joined by Nick DeYoung. Nick is a former Epic employee where he worked for over six years on enterprise implementations, training over 10,000 end users simultaneously for go lives. And he's also worked on numerous Epic upgrades, refuel projects, and, and other projects where he saw firsthand the importance of ongoing training. And Nick, Nick leads 314E's partnerships and leverages his integration knowledge and EHR experience to support our customers with their implementations. And lastly is Anushil Singh, and Anushil is 314's product and technology lead for Jeeves, and he combines a sharp technical um, background with strategic mindset to help redefine EHR training and, and is really kind of committed to crafting user-centered solutions that amplify Jeeves' growth and impact. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to Ryan to run today's webinar. Thanks, Casey. So today we're gonna to be talking about Jeeves, our just-in-time AI training software. And when we talk about Jeeves, Jeeves really empowers the end users by connecting them to a self-help library that they can pull in their moment of need that's specific to your organization. It gives the users the ability to answer questions themselves, to review information and to pull new knowledge to themselves while they're in the flow of work. So Jeeves is really about the just-in-time training, exactly what I need, when I need it, without memory overload. The It's in the flow of work, as we spoke about before, that it's there, it's embedded directly in Epic if, you're, if you use Epic. There's also a button in Cerner and we can put buttons and links in just about anywhere so people can access that content. So it's right where they're working. They don't need to go somewhere else. And with single sign-on, lets them directly into the library, removing those barriers. And Jeeves makes use of micro-learning. Micro-learning is really those how-to short nuggets 
uh, that give me the specifics of how I need to complete the task. So Jeeves really solves a few issues. The one of the issues that uh, we address is that constant overload that we are talking about. So cognitive load in our training classes, we know that a lot of the trainees um, walk out of those classes and they really just can't assimilate any more information. That, that is a huge strain on them. And then they start forgetting that information before they ever have a chance to apply it. So Jeeves gives them the ability to refresh themselves when they have the, uh, when they're on the job and they have questions. It's really kind of the first line of, of, of support that providers and clinicians can use. Another problem that Jeeves looks to solve is the access to knowledge resources. So with current technology, the access of that content can be difficult. You might have thousands of tip sheets. You've got training videos in another place. And Jeeves brings those all together in one place using advanced AI search engines to actually pull that content to, uh, to the forefront when someone needs that with these search engines. And another problem that we look to solve is upgrades. And also not only upgrades, but I would say enhancements. There's a constant flow of information and Jeeves helps organize that and it helps get the right information to the right people just when they need it without all of the other information that they would need to sift through. In this particular screenshot, this is a screenshot of an EMR and what it could possibly look like is in this example, we have a Jeeves button embedded in the top left-hand side. And when that button is pressed, a pop-up window or in inside the side panel, Jeeves pops up and is there ready to take a question from your user and they can get an answer without ever leaving the EMR. And we'll dive into this screen, a larger version of it in a little bit. So deep integration is very, very important. No one is going to the LMS to try to answer a question. And so Jeeves gives them the ability to access all that information in that moment of need. So one question we're, we constantly are asked about is, you know, what's the right format? So a lot of people create tip sheets, paper, how-to uh, documents, and a lot of people are starting to adopt video. So this is, in this graph, this is a little bit of research on video as a, as a medium, along with some other formats, and based on people's generation. So we can see that kind of email newsletters is in that first column. So baby boomers, very popular with them, but less so as we move down to Generation Z. Want to specifically focus your attention kind of in that middle area with all those fives. Long form videos, short form videos are the most popular medium throughout the different generations and is the most widely accepted. I, uh, there's always the example of YouTube. YouTube, about 30% of their content are how-to videos. And but based on that popularity, we know that videos are a great way to communicate and a great medium to deliver content in. We'll talk a little bit about the improvements of Jeeves here in Q4. In Q4. So we want to make our search even smarter uh, with the AI so that the content's brought up quicker and it's more relevant. We'll take a look at the actual Jeeves tool in a moment and show you how that works. Um, but at its core, connecting people to the right information is Jeeves' mission. Encouraging users to stay proactive and anticipate challenges find answers. Uh, we can now actually, based on their viewing habits, make suggestions of other content that they would want to look at um, based on their department and what they're viewing. We wanna help EHR users find their preferred format. Some people like tip sheets as we saw on the previous screen, um, but micro learning videos and even interactive learning, uh, which is new for Jeeves is going to be available where I can actually take videos and make and have people interact with them, click and enter in information. That's a new feature. 
make training content easy to manage for your training team and informatics teams. So how do you manage that library is something that we always pay attention to, is making sure things are up to date and making it easy to deliver content and keep it updated. So let's take a look at the improvements. So we're going to go in, into the tool and this is the main screen of Jeeves. So I might actually, it might look a little different de depending on how I enter this. So this is the full screen version. It might be a smaller version if I'm entering in from Epic or another EMR. So here on the screen, um, we now have up an upgraded area. So we put our updates up at top, but here under continuous learning, at, at a glance as a user, I can see my outstanding trainings. So I have one training that was due in April that I didn't do, and I have another one in August that's overdue. And I have one coming up in January that I haven't started yet. Um, we can also see that I've done two out of the four for August. And if I won't want to take any of this training, I simply click on the card and it will take me to the training. So I can see here that this is a, a PowerPoint that was delivered. I've got two videos. And then I have a SCORM e-learning course that was also assigned as part of this. I just click on any one of these assignments and then I will be taken directly into that. So it allows me to see what I've been assigned and what I have yet to complete. What's new is a new feature. So this is content that's been added to the system recently. And each one of these cards has information. I can see that I, this is a video that there's an interactive learning associated with it as well, and that there's also a tip sheet. So this one has all three of the different modes of learning here. We can see that it was assigned to front office and billing staff, and that it's got 79 views, and it was last updated 26 minutes ago. Here we can see that I can click on this, and get a QR code, or I can actually copy a link if I wanted to share it. And I can actually add it to my bookmarks directly from here as well by clicking on this. So if it's something that I think I'm going to use or want to refer back to, the, the new capability of adding bookmarks and sharing directly from the card makes that easy to do. Below that, we have top search phrases. And this is from my department. I'm in all departments right now in this demo environment. So there, if you see a wide range of content, that's why. But normally that's gonna be based on the user template and it'll restrict down the information that they're seeing based on their template. So what to learn next based on my department and what is being viewed, what's popular, we'll see some additional cards here. And then based on my recent views, the AI is actually looking at the content library and it's, it's taking the transcripts of all of the content, comparing those versus what I've been pulling up and making suggestions to me. And then of course, I can see exactly what other people in my department are using as well here as also. So let's talk a little bit about the search engine. We talked about enhancements to the search engine. So when I have a question, I can interact with the library by simply clicking here, or in, if we're embedded inside of Epic, I can put it directly there also. And I can put a question directly into here. So when I start typing, it'll bring up the most viewed assets. So I can make a selection there. I can actually see my recent searches. And then I can also see popular searches. So I can just click on any one of those. So I'm gonna choose the, how do I import Thanksgiving as we have that holiday coming up? And what it's done is it's pulled up a PDF, a tip sheet on how to add holidays to open EMR. So in the open EMR, you actually can put holidays in there so it helps with scheduling. And that's exactly what it pulled up based on my search. Notice that the title doesn't correspond here. What the system is actually doing, it's not looking for keywords necessarily. It's looking at the entire body of the documents or the transcripts of the videos to find matches and near matches. And the AI is then using that information to push those to the top. 
So it's using natural language. I don't have to guess at what words a trainer entered when they were setting up the system because it's looking for that information in the context. So the AI knows that it's Thanksgiving. So therefore holidays is a fantastic match. If I wanted to narrow down my search, I could also click over here on the right-hand side. Going back into this, also notice that I can get help from the Jeeves bot. So if I take this information and put it into the Jeeves bot, or I could just click on that button, what it'll do is it'll actually look at the content. So we're having a conversation with our content library and it's created its own mini tip sheet on how to actually complete the activity. So I need to prepare the CSV file and it's giving me five steps on how to do that. If I want some more information, I can click on the link to actually go to the document that we are just looking at as it is the best response there. And we do have an enhanced recorder. So in, to get content into Jeeves, you can import videos, you can import documents that you might already have. You could create a tip sheet from scratch and, or you can do your own recording. And we're gonna go ahead and click on record. Uh, we're not gonna do a complete recording today just to kind of save time, but we do wanna look at some of the features on here. So in our modified recorder, I can actually come in, I can choose the video quality and if I wanna countdown or not. And something that's very new is scripting. So we're going to add some scripting to this. And as I'm actually going through my script and I'm reading it, it will auto advance that script for me as I, I go through the, and make the recording. The um, one thing I really like about the scripting is that it does auto advance. So as I'm going through the script, it'll actually auto forward for me through that process. So here I'm going to pick on whether I want a window. So do I want webcam? Uh, do I want to use the, which microphone do I want to use? And do I want to have picture in picture? And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just select window. And so it'll ask me which window do, do I want to share? And we'll go ahead and just click on this one here. So I get a countdown and now I'm recording. <clears throat> so this is where the script would be displayed if I would, would have hit save and it'll and I'm able to read through that as I navigate on, around the screen. A couple other enhancements is we actually have added a control panel so that I can actually pause and that's beneficial when I'm recording long videos. So now I can pause, I can check my notes to make sure that I know where I'm going to click next and then I can start the recording again and and go through that. It's very helpful as you're as you're recording things that you might not necessarily be familiar with. Uh, during upgrades, people really use that quite a bit. And once I get done, then I would just simply click on stop. But for time purposes today, we are going to go ahead and navigate back to the main area. And we're going to add an asset. We're going to pull in, we're going to import a video from on Open EMR that was recorded earlier. And it you can see that it loads very quickly. And here's the first screen. So the first screen is micro learning. You can see that up here at the top. So this is going to be a video demonstration. So just a pure recording of the actual workflow. The I can hit play. In this demonstration, we'll show you how to add patients. To so you can hear my voice, and that was a one-time recording. Here on the bottom, I have the ability to edit. So if I wanted to cut out this portion, I could split that off and then delete it out. And I can rinse and repeat throughout the entire process. Uh, for example, I have a, a long pause here that I'd like to shorten shorten up, and I can take that out at, 
And as I just go through, as I play it, it'll actually skip over those pieces that have been taken out. A couple other things um, as you're recording, the, it's at, anything cut out, it's taking out of the transcript. So it's striking through. So this is this portion here. The transcript's nice where I can jump on to any point throughout that conversation and look at those specifically. I can also add non-active or non-interactive elements. So for example, if I wanted to add a shape on the screen, I could do that. I can change the color, put the borders. I can determine how long it's gonna stay on the screen. And you can see it down here on the timeline. I can move that around as well. So this allows me to highlight different areas of the screen. So if I wanted people to pay attention to the upper left-hand side, I could put that box up there. So in addition to adding these non-interactive elements, I can also choose a voice replacement. And I'll just click on Charles. And I can get a preview of Charles by clicking the play button. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to record once, replace my voice with an AI voice that's going to take out the background noise. It'll take out a lot of the minor imperfections in the narration. And that means I don't have to spend a lot of time editing the voice content to get it perfect. By replacing my voice with an AI voice, it's gonna be much more consistent. There's going to be less distractions in that and the AI replacement does it all. And also, this is a new feature that we have, and we'll see actually when we publish it, we now have the option, instead of uh, publishing directly, we can now put it into a state where other people can come and review it. So that's useful if several people are working on a project, and we want to make sure that the training that we're creating is the right content. We can save it to that review status and have people come in and look at it, they can add comments and then we can make changes as necessary. So that's the first mode. So in this release of Jeeves, we can now actually in and not only have a demonstration, but we can also create something with interactive elements. So the demonstration is very nice if I have a, a question, a just-in-time question. But if I just have a simple question, I don't want to have interactivity. But if I'm learning it for the first time or it's very complex, then you probably want to come in and you do want to add interactive elements. So based on the same video, and we have separate outputs for both, so you can use those as needed, I can add a knowledge check. So I can actually ask a question. So we can ask, we can pause the video, ask them a question, they'll respond, and then so before moving on. So adding knowledge checks to the videos when they're complex is very helpful in the learning process. And it really helps kind of people assimilate that knowledge. So I can also put in input box. So I can put this over an area and have someone type into it. So to simulate, make kind of make a simulation of inputting data. I have the ability to put a call out. So I can say type type the, this address into this field and hit enter before proceeding. So with the interactive element, it'll stop until they complete the task of either typing um, or if we add a hotspot uh, where they're clicking. So this is an invisible hotspot that we can put over an area. And let me just advance this video a little bit. So in this particular case, let's say that we want them to click on 13. So I can put this over the top of that and then simply put in a call out box saying click on the 13th before proceeding and the video will stop there until they complete that activity. So I can add several of these across the bottom. You can see all the interactive elements and now I can simulate the screens clicking and inputting information and have hands-on practice in addition to just watching it. In addition to that, we have a, the ability for a tip sheet. So the AI has gone through the transcript of the video that we made, and it has created a tip sheet for us. 
So this particular tip sheet has eight steps. And in each of those steps, so click on the open EMR demo, type in the username as physician, enter password physician, click login. It's created all of this for us. We can come in and edit any certain any part of it, remove it, change the words, add steps. We can also add images and we'll show you what a, a finished one looks like as well. And it will so we can easily create a tip sheet in five minutes to go along with our interactive video and our demonstration video. So a couple other things about the uh, that all questions that always come up uh, about the tip sheet is on on the tip sheet, can you actually go in and, and can you annotate the screenshots? You can zoom into the corners of those. You can add other elements pointing to things on that tip sheet. So highlights, you can also blur. And let's go ahead and jump into one that's already created. And let's go ahead and go into this one. Went in as a user view. Let me go in as an admin. So this is my catalog of everything that's been created. And we want to go in and edit this. It'll ask me if I want to put it into a draft mode since it was published, which I do. So here's the first screen, and that's the regular demo micro learning. Then we have the interactive portion. We have the complete a completed tip sheet here. Notice over here on the right hand side. So we've added numbers. So since this one had a few different directions, so step two, step three, step four, we've added those to the tip sheet. And this would, of course, have your branding on it. And here we have another, we put a red box around this. And we've added a box and an arrow. We've added a circle. You can actually draw on the screen. Here we've zoomed into a, to the, the screen to really highlight what we were looking at, and, which is very easy to do. You can just do that with your mouse. And we've added some other annotations, just showing what people should be clicking on th through this process. So I'm going to hit next. So we can actually we have some choices to send as review, as I said before. So if we're going to share it and have people look at it, then we would send it for review. We can save it as a draft. If I'm not done with it yet, I would save it as a draft. Or I can actually hit publish and have it published directly. Throughout here, um, and uh, We've been using expiration date for a while, but we've actually made some enhancements. It's defaulting to policy now. So the policy that we have it defaulting to is six months in the future. So it's automatically adding that information for us. We'll just click on publish. And everything is auto-saved to the cloud so that you don't have to hit save all the time throughout that process. And it's processing now. And to manage it, I can go in to see what's in draft modes. I can go in to see what's processing. And it's already processed. I can see what's under review, what's published. So what's expired and archived um, are also new statuses that I can look at. So if I'm looking for something older, I could go in and see. So th these actually need to have the, their expiration dates hit. So they're still in the system, but we need to go in and review them. So this helps me manage my catalog and make sure that I'm reviewing everything every six months. And then archived, of course, people don't see this when they search, uh, but here from the screen, I can see that this one was a demonstration an interactive and a tip sheet as well. Get some basic information and review older content directly from this screen. And with that, those are the enhancements and updates for Q4. And let's take some questions. Ryan, a question, uh, what analytics data does Jeeves provide? Hmm. That's a great question. Let me jump into that. Um, so analytics, uh, we have an entire tab for admins and managers, depending on how you set up the rights. The, really when you boil this down. So we've got a snapshot of how many people are coming in, what are they looking at, 
how many unique users are coming into the system, <clears throat> what contents being are they ex uh, looking for, what searches are they doing, uh, we even have what searches yielded no results. So maybe I need to make some training content based on that. And then kind of top content by departments as well. So we can dive a little bit deeper into any one of those. So in this particular phrase, this was searched five times this month, which I can control up here. And I can take a look at volume kind of month over month and what that's looking like as well, or look for specific people and what they're looking at as well. Wonderful. Uh, next question is, how does Jeeves' authoring module differ from other authoring tools? Yeah. yeah, I, yeah I, I can take that. Yeah, I can take that. So, uh, so uh, what we are trying to build uh, when we are doing this authoring tool is we are trying to focus at what is the specific need for any training material, right? So all the other video editing tool is more focused on, let's say, changing color, uh, mixing audios and all those things, right? But what a trainer needs is a very easy, uh, with very low uh, learning curve, where they can do specific things just related to training video. So our major goal is to build uh, a tool, authoring tool, where all the trainers with, let's say, who, who don't need to go through a uh, video editing tool training, right, can still do things what, what is needed. And also we realize that it's not about just video editing, but it's about all the different learning format. Uh, for example, tip sheet, right? Tip sheet is such an important learning format that uh, we, we are able to create it out of box. So it's not that we are just doing a video editing. It's also about creating all those uh, different uh, learning formats automatically. So yeah, that's how we are trying to differentiate uh, Jeeves authoring module from any other uh, editing tool, uh, video editing tool. Does that answer? Yep, anything else you wanna add, Ryan? Yeah, I think the, the biggest difference, and just to add on to what Anishel was talking about, is, is that we're using video as the main medium which is faster to work in. And then a lot of the traditional tools use slide-based technology. So instead of having a video and stopping it, they're creating slides um, and, and it could be hundreds of slides to as they actually do their recording. So I don't need to go into every slide to make the changes. I can just make it in the video, which really speeds up the content creation. Wonderful. Kind of a follow-up there is um, from a question from Greg on the interactive videos. Is there a timeout for hotspots and uh, hotspots? So for instance, in Captivate, they can have it pop up with a more detailed hint on how to proceed. Um, and so without this, the hotspot could become a roadblock. So any comments yeah. around that? Yeah, yeah. So uh, what? So if you see when you uh, add a hotspot, we also have an option of adding a callout. So basically, you can have a pointer pointing to the hotspot, saying that okay, click here. And hotspot will also have a background, so user will be able to see that where they need to do. And then once they click on it, uh, then the video will proceed. We we haven't added timeout uh, because the callout should be good enough to uh, indicate where to click and what to do here. Uh, but yeah, if, if needed, I guess we can add a uh, timeout also. It's, it's a good feedback for us. Uh, but yeah, uh, using hotspot and call out together uh, is something you can achieve uh, what is mentioned. Thanks, Greg, for the uh, question. Uh, another question here from, from Travis is, uh, can I, someone with Jeeves admin rights, have someone who does not have Jeeves rights, record a workflow via Teams and turn that into a video or tip sheet? So uh, in Jeeves, uh, when you add a user, uh, you have different permissions which you can give. So uh, you might not need to give uh, admin rights to the author. Uh, you can just give uh, author rights to them and they can record and uh, once you are satisfied, you can publish uh, it as an uh, admin. So we have a very robust different permission system, which can be used. Yeah, so I think to expand on that, the, the non-admin can be given permission-based access to record, but mm -hmm. 
but maybe not publish. And that's where that workflow of under review comes into play, where they can create that recording using Jeeves and then uh, push that to someone to do the review. And that person who does the review, maybe an admin, can also publish that asset. So there's there's a couple of ways to go about that. You can give them permission-based access in Jeeves to record, um, or, or, or as I think Ryan was showing there, they can, you can import any externally created video uh, that is an MP4 format. So they could record something in another tool and then import it um, using that import feature. And just to add to that, I could still use the AI voice replacement. I could then make it interactive and make a tip sheet from it as well, even if it's not re recorded in Jeeves originally. Yep. Uh, question from Beth. Uh, around assignments is, can you delete assignments? Uh, so after a user completes an asset in an assignment, is it is there a setting which can take the screen back to the assignment without using the back arrow? So I think there's the two questions there. So one, can you delete assignments? Yeah, yeah. As we, yeah, so go on, that, sorry. So, so I think there's a, a few things to unpack there. So once someone starts participating in an assignment, then then that becomes a, a record. So um, could, we can definitely do that and on and on the back end and even uh, provide that to the top level admins. But once um, I complete something, it will fall off of the screen. Um, but and if I want to check old, old to do's, I can come over here under the completed. So this one was com completed. These are pending. And then I can see all assignments that I've ever had from this tab. And then I think the follow up to that is, and then go if you go to pending, Ryan, there, there's an assignment that might have three or four tasks or assets to review. My, mm -hmm. my understanding of that question is, if I were to watch create smart phrases, is there a way that it will take me right back to this assignment versus having to go back and hit the back button or go back into the assignment? So that's probably a, a feature enhancement we need to think about here. Mm -hmm. um, and so thank you for calling that out. Um, a question from Sophie is, what new AI capabilities are coming to Jeeves? Yeah. So uh, what we're trying to do next is uh, to make our authoring module even more simpler. Uh, so, for example, we have an interactive annotation, which is knowledge check, right? So what next we're going to do is pop out new questions automatically, right? And even the annotations like hotspot based on the video, uh, because we know where the mouse is following. And we are able to, of course, uh, using AI, understand what author is saying. So using all this data, we are trying to come up with a model which can automatically identify where a author might like to have a hotspot and we automatically do it. So uh, all our AI uh, efforts are going to make authoring easier and easier so that uh, it should be as simple as this recording and everything else comes with AI. Uh, and it should be like just review and then uh, go ahead and publish. So that is where most of our current effort is uh, going on. Uh, the next question is: Can you can you access the transcripts when adding screenshots screenshots to the tip sheets? So you can jump to certain areas of the video to make that process quicker. Unfortunately, right now no, but I'm taking it as a very good feedback, and uh, we're gonna incorporate in the newer version. But this is a very good feedback. Yeah, we we should have that. Sim similar, sort of what you just described, where it knows where you're at in the video is gonna yeah. automate. Yeah. And I think, I think our intent too is that it, it, the goal hopefully is that we can understand where you're at in the screen and that workflow and just grab those screenshots for you. Uh, from John, can, can Jeeves be used outside of the EHR, say nursing educators? Yeah, definitely. So as Ryan was showing the demo, uh, it works on any browser uh, and you can also open it in mobile browser as well. It's uh, completely uh, compatible with the mobile version as well. So yeah, it is uh, definitely possible to uh, open it uh, outside Epic as well. Excellent, yeah. So this is not confined to just EHR data. Um, you can really create libraries of content 
uh, for various users and and launch from a standalone version. And then we're working on integration or APIs with other other systems like ERP systems and things like that. Yeah. Uh, Danielle asked if I, if I search for a topic for help and if I don't find any training material, what's the next course of action? So uh, there are two parts to this. One, all the admins will get to know uh, what was the topic search with no result. Uh, but if someone needs uh, immediate help related to some topic, which is not yet uh, added to the library, uh, what they can do is connect to a live agent. So we, we have a feature where we can connect our bot to a live agent, where let's say if you have any uh, live agent person, they can, uh, as Ryan is uh, doing it in on his screen, uh, you can actually connect and uh, maybe you can get a real time help uh, with an agent or anyone who is in support team. So yeah, mm -hmm. this, is, this is something which we are going to enhance even more. Uh, we have some ideas around this, uh, but yeah, uh, maybe uh, it will be Q225, but yes, right now this is a, a course of action. Right. Um, Nessie asked, does Jeeve have an LMS or is this, uh, you know, does this replace the LMS? Not completely right now. Uh, we, we have uh, assignments as such, but yeah, the whole notion of course and let's say compliance content or onboarding content, recurring training and all those things are something uh, which we are working on. There's a separate team uh, which is constantly working on LMS. Um, mm -hmm. Our aggressive target will be Q125. Uh, we, we'll definitely try to bring it even before, uh, but uh, uh, that is something which is definitely on our roadmap and team is already working on it. So uh, you will have a full-fledged LMS tailored for training uh, and healthcare training organizations, uh, healthcare organization, so, so that only those important features, because generic LMS will have Tons of feature, with, but not tailored for healthcare. So the LMS we are working on is uh, something with deep understanding of healthcare. What kind of requirements are there? Uh, that is how we are building our LMS. Yeah. Today we can load uh, Swarm courses that are created in yeah. Captivate, Articulate, or another program into our courseware. So besides the demonstration, the interactive video. The tip sheet, we, you can actually load SCORM courses as well, assign those out and track all four of those as part of the assignments. So it's on the roadmap. Um, another question for from Beth is, can assets be grouped into folders? I, I, I think I understand that if you think about the library or the categories, maybe that's sort of how we look, think about folders, but um, Ryan Anishield, do you have any thoughts around that? Yeah. Then you want to take it up. Uh, yeah. yeah, the so we use category labels, um, the, and we but we don't use Microsoft folders anymore. Um, we put the label on this so that based on the um, the user template, it can we connect these categories to different templates to suggest content specific to their to their area of expertise. And then, of course, each one of the, uh, this in this admin view, I can actually search the categories and filter them, et cetera. And maybe from an end user perspective, if they're doing a search and they want to explore the category library, they can do so by browsing. And so that'll open up all assets within a, a category. Yeah. Based on how you're logged in. So um, <clears throat> I don't see any additional questions here. Um, Give it just another minute or two. Oh, here's one. Uh, if we run into any problems while using Jeeves, who do we reach out to and how fast can we expect a response? Uh, Ryan, do you want to show the feedback um, icon there? Yep. Yeah. If you run into an issue, um, you know, hit this hit this feedback loop. And then it'll it'll capture your screen. You document what your issue is that you're running into 
Um, and that goes directly to our support team. Yep, you can draw on the annotate on it. Um, and that's going to go directly to our support teams and they'll, they'll follow up um, when they have a resolution and as quickly as possible. You can also email us at support at okjeeves.com and, um, and we'll respond. And our, our, our um, team is working quickly to respond to things as, as, as quickly as we can and we'll do things um, you know, typically within 24 hours. Well, it seems like we we're good there. So uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, as I mentioned, we're going to share a recording of this uh, of this session. And um, if you have any follow up questions uh, that you want to reach out to us, uh, you can you can do so. My email is casey.post at 314ecorp.com uh, or you can email us at support at okjeeves.com. Um, I do see we have one other hand raised here, but um, yeah, I think if, if you have a question, shoot me an email. Um, and then I want to thank everyone for your participa participation today. And, um, and we look forward to chatting further. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.